All right, welcome back to the program. In case you're just joining us, it's time for our second interview. Femi Boye, the, the President and Chief Executive Officer at Koinonia Global Services, is joining me right now via uh, Zoom from Canada. Uh, Mr. Boye, good to see you. A happy new year to you. It's been quite a while. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Nancy. Good morning, and um, good morning, Nigerians and um, everyone out there. Good morning to you. Happy New Year in February. It's still, it's still okay. <laughs> um, let's start on this premise. Uh, data shows, uh, there was a report I read, I can't remember exactly, or I think from the China Customs Service, that in May of 2020, China exported face masks, just the one I have here with me. China exported more face masks than any other product they are known for. Products like cell phones, products like um, computers, and all of that. So China exported more of these products to the rest of the world. What is Nigeria missing in all of this in terms of exports? Um, well, I'm afraid I was not excited to be starting with uh, what Nigeria is missing. But that's the truth. We have to be looking at what Nigeria is missing. I was actually um, going to look at the brighter side. What is Nigeria missing? Nigeria is missing export development. Nigeria has uh, prioritized export promotion and therefore set up an export promotion agency. I would uh, want to see Nigeria actually um, add development to the mandate of the Nigeria Export Promotion Council. Why am I answering this way? Because um, you cannot promote what is not um, existing. So you need to develop before you promote. Somebody must have, part of development actually is identifying opportunities, right? So as soon as the pandemic set in and the people started to think of what mm -hmm. and what um, the world would need, Somebody thought, okay, we can uh, do um, health or unhealthy face marks. Now, don't get me wrong. I am also aware, at least on the non-oil export community of practice, which is a platform that um, belong to right there in Nigeria, there are a lot of enterprising uh, women who were into fashion before pandemic who actually immediately jumped in the opportunity of um, face masks, but they were producing the face masks uh, for the Nigerian uh, community, which was almost as um, uh, as as least impacting as um, I wouldn't mention the country, but um, I remember way back in 1988 when I visited that country, it was uh, estimated that um, people thought that it was actually a lacuna, but I saw it as an opportunity because. The women were going around, sorry to use that um, uh, pictorial illustration, uh, going around with uh, their God-given uh, resources, the uh, breasts um, un unprotected, unguarded. So I saw the opportunity of um, exporting brass to that West African country, and I partnered with a company in Ibado to actually export brass to this West African country. You understand? Mm -hmm. So. Development is about identifying the opportunities and then going in. So exporting for, uh, during COVID, what is it that we have succeeded in exporting? I don't know what we have done better. Um, about a few days ago, the EMPNEN Network of Practicing mm -hmm. non oil Exporters of Nigeria held a town hall meeting at which uh, Bamidele Ayemibo and my humble self actually brought up the, well, it was actually correctly titled the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the good side was our identifying uh, products. I'm not even mentioning services. Products in which Nigeria is top 20 uh, largest producer in the world, but none, not a single one among those products is Nigeria even a recognized exporter, not to talk of having a position in the uh, world's market share. So Nancy, to answer the question again, the, what Nigeria is missing is actually development. Once we do export development, we're going to be able to put in the strategies. We're going to be able to harness 
the policies. Again, Nigeria is missing that. There is no articulated approach. The central bank is now um, working 25 hours a day trying to promote export. And Nigeria Export uh, Processing Zones Authority is promoting export. Nexim is promoting export. NEPC, which is um, uh, the one with the, in quote, uh, singular mandate to the exclusiveness of any other agency in Nigeria. That's what the act says, uh, to promote export. So everybody is doing what everybody else is doing. Multiplicity, duplicity of activities, we just end up like a barber's chair, moving around without actually any motion. You That's know, it. That's why it's deplorable. Nancy. Mr. Boyede, now, since you've come to the point of development, because we have advantages in just like you said about 20 commodities which we are the biggest producers and you know what came to my mind there was the, the show that i did either two or three weeks ago where we brought out the data that nigeria is the largest producer of cassava yam and beans in 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 the world the second largest producer of okra sorghum uh, i think we are also the third in sweet potato peanut and ginger we are the fourth in cocoa uh, palm oil, sesame, uh, sesame, what do they call that product? Yeah, sesame, <laughs> sesame seeds. Fifth, sesame seeds. So, yeah, so I can go on and on. But yeah, just like you said, yes. we, are, we are not having the export component. What opportunities do you think lie in all of this? For people that are watching us right now, even during COVID, people have been eating, people have been producing various things that some of the residues, even from this product, even if it's not the food itself, some of the residues can be used for other things. So what opportunities are, are lying in uh, uh, this? Nancy, I don't know if you forgot. I think I can remember. I don't know the month. But at the onset of COVID, I was um, your guest on this program. And then we talked about export opportunities that are likely to come up during this pandemic. And I did say, I explained, articulated the fact that First and foremost, mm -hmm. supply chain uh, processes around the world are going to be disrupted. So there is going to be for countries that are already not adequate producers of the things that the population needs. There is going to be a large gap, supply gap. And that's where export mm -hmm. development should have started. Let's take um, Af uh, AFCFTA started January 1. Um, during this COVID, I was reading somewhere two days ago that uh, the, uh, Ghana has now signed a country to country agreement, uh, specific agreement with the United Kingdom to uh, the tune of about $1.3 billion. Uh, sorry, pound sterling, $1.3 billion pound sterling that um, Ghana, Ghanaian exporters are going to be shipping to uh, the United Kingdom alone. I'm not talking about the European Union. Yes, because Where of are Brexit. We? Yeah. yeah, because of Brexit. Where are we? Which market have we identified? Nancy, you are aware because I know you belong to the Nigeria Trade Experts Forum where we throw, uh, throw all these ideas around. Um, I think a few days ago, I put something on the platform uh, talking about um, uh, Ghana um, um, uh, making its first shipment under after. Or maybe it was at the CBN forum that I made that decision. A participant came up and was just like the Nigeria mentality was defensive and was talking about how we should not uh, be measuring ourselves with Ghana, how we should... what. There can't be development if we don't understand that charity begins at home, if we don't understand that the world is not ever going to wait for us. And people are going to move. The fact that we are saying we are not ready, uh, Mr. Boyede is already mentioning um, a neighboring country that is doing this is not patriotic. No. If they're talking about patriotism, permit the immodesty, I think that as far as export promotion and advocacy is concerned in Nigeria, I'm one of the top five, or if not top three, patriots in this campaign. That's not where, what we're talking about. We're talking about living the truth, facing the reality, coming up with, just like you said, Nancy, we are talking about products. The world has gone beyond products. The world is talking about services. Supply chain now is virtual 
You attend a meeting, uh, a Zoom meeting with a Nigerian businessman, permit uh, again my having to uh, uh, say this realistically, 90, no, let's, let's be fair. About 60% of these meetings are never smooth. They are interrupted by one thing or the other. And I remember as a participant in, uh, I mean, one of the uh, members in this Nigeria Agenda 2050, I'm one of the experts who were invited to actually design the uh, uh, roadmap for Nigeria between now and 2050. That's the new economic development agenda. I raised the issue. Is Nigeria ready for global trade? That's export. Very soon, we are not going to be talking about products and commodities anymore. The world is talking about services, using services to drive product trade. That's where export development comes in. That's where it is important that we should build synergy rather than dissipate individual energies. Mm. That's where it is important for, for example, okay, um, let's commend the federal government again. I read, I, I saw like every other person, oh, federal government has released 50 billion uh, Naira as the biggest export expansion facility ever. But it's the same federal government that approved and allocated only 1 billion Naira for export expansion grant uh, for the year 2021. That is not enough. With aggressive exporting, if export was properly developed, Naraguta leather in Jobs, that sector alone that I know is almost dead. I was um, back in time, in the time when I, I was a humble middle-level management uh, with the federal government, I went into the exploration of Naraguta uh, leather in Jaws, and I am aware of the, the capacity, the export potential of that sector, that if somebody just took it up, even if it wasn't the federal government, if the Plateau State government, for example, were to say that I want to develop export, I keep using the word development, and then decided to upscale and upgrade Naraguta leather, where we will be playing in the world today. Okay, Mr. Boy, then, we, we, we just have a few minutes, like three minutes or so, and I want you to, to comment on this. Export financing... That, that, <laughs> Mr. Boye, I can't hear you. What did you say? My number. I'm not allowing the things to come out. To. <laughs> okay. You know, we just have about three minutes, and I promise you we'll do this again sometime soon. But I want you to comment on export, export financing and perhaps the reopening of the borders. Because as at that time when you came on my show last year, early last year or so, in the, mid, in the middle of that lockdown, the borders were closed. Are you feeling differently now? Yes. I am not seen differently. I am weeping. I'm weeping because I also have a personal uh, a practical experience. I had a container of um, uh, a 40 foot container of various items um, coming to me from Nigeria, coming to me here in Canada. I ensured that uh, two of those items were actually the ones that were loaded for me were produced the week when I got a space on the ship. That was as far back as September 2020. And um, you know that we live in a country here in an economy where for health reasons, everything is measured in shelf life. Nancy, that container departed a papa eventually on the 12th, was it? No, on the 15th of January, 2021. I had wasted four months of the shelf life of my product in a papa court in Nigeria. So. When you are talking about export financing, you finance export and produce something that cannot be exported. I know somebody who had shipments about, uh, he told me he had about 39 containers of Zobo headed for Mexico that are still not that way. At least me, I'm lucky. Mine are already on the high seas that are still uh, uh, about 300 meters away from entering the port in Apapa after eight months. And now he is the one paying the uh, uh, trailers and what have you uh, that are. So do you, do you still want to ask the question, so I think, what is Nigeria missing? No, I think, I think that, that answers it. Your, your response has definitely answered it. Mr. Boyode, I promise you we're going to do this sometime soon, very soon. But I don't expect you to go back to sleep because I know it's early, very early there 
in Canada. So don't go back to school. Early to early to early to bed. Early to you've risen already. So start work. <laughs> so I'll see. <laughs> Thank you, man. I'll see you soon. Thank you. All right. I've been speaking with uh, Femi Boyede, who is the president and chief executive officer at uh, Koinonia Global Services. We've been talking about exports during a uh, COVID. Thank you all for being a part of the show today. Please join us again tomorrow for another edition of the program. I am Nancy Naji. Be the best you can be. Be the change you want to see. And don't forget to wear this. Is there an accessory now or a health item? Whatever it is, wear it. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching our video. Please hit the subscribe button below, turn on post notification to follow all our updates.